What's going on there folks? Good evening. The Earthmaster here on this Saturday evening with an update video. March 26, 2022 is the date, uh, just about 6.27 p.m. California time. The latest quake on the globe shows a 4.8 earthquake striking off the coast of Oregon. Let's go ahead and check out this latest data here on the latest uh, map here from the USGS folks. Get some, uh, some conflicting magnitudes there. Looks like 4.6, 4.8. We'll go ahead and check out the exact magnitude on the map here from the USGS, if I can open this window correctly. There we go. Well off the coast into the uh, Blanco Fracture Zone. This area here seeing a pretty good swarm of movement. If you recall, a couple months back here, we had quite a few fours and some fives kicking up here within the same area. This is a rather deep earthquake uh, for this zone. 4.6 earthquake at 40, uh, 40 kilometers below surface. So this is rather deep. It has been reviewed. So it looks as though the depth and the magnitude is standing uh, still at uh, 4.6 on the magnitude scale there. Historical data does show some activity off here. Uh, a lot of the swarming did take place here over the past few months within the region. As uh, far as any large magnitudes go, this really don't see too many large magnitude earthquakes off, off the coast here uh, into this zone. But i uh, got to remember what's just over here to the eastern side of the... Uh, of the plate here, uh, we have the the uh, Cascadia subduction zone, right? Juan de Fuca plate interaction with the uh, North American plate, creating that uh, major subduction zone. So kind of curious to see what's going to happen. We haven't seen too much in the way of tremor activity. I want to check out the tremor map here tonight, and it shows zero epicenters of tremor. So we're pretty well locked here along the region. We're not able to, uh, or at least we're not seeing any tremor in the Cascadia, it's been almost uh, about six days or so now of um, continuous lack of tremor along the region of the Cascadia. So uh, we're kind of, kind of watching this pretty closely, folks. I think a little bit of what's going on here, uh, aside from this earthquake that struck out here in the mid-Indian Ridge, a 5.7, this one occurred, looks like, a few minutes prior to the uh, 4.6 off the coast of Oregon. We're lacking some major earthquake activity. Pretty much, it seems like we're stuck here within this region. I can pretty much draw a line of activity eastward. There hasn't been a whole lot of movement over here around the northern um, Java Sea area or uh, Java Trench and areas up in China and, and uh, up around the bend around the Middle East. I think uh, this area should pop off a pretty large one here pretty soon just due to the lack of activity and the back build here of the plate dynamics. We've seen quite a bit of movement here around Taiwan, Japan, Areas around the Indonesia area, all pointing an arrow in general direction here of where our plate movement typically takes place. And the lack of activity here is a little concerning. So uh, we are, I think we are starting to see a little telltale sign here of some progress and some earthquake activity uh, over in this region of the world. But uh, still watch this area here pretty closely for some uh, possible large scale movement. Uh, 5.7 mid Indian Ridge at 6.4 kilometers. Like I said, these two earthquakes just happening within um, pretty much minutes of each other. Uh, no tsunami statement, of course. Uh, I'm kind of surprised that the Tsunami Warning Center did put out a, uh, uh, a notice uh, about it. I want to bring this up here real quick here on the Tsunami Warning Center. They just uh, posted this here, 4.6 off the coast of Oregon. Depth here at 25 uh, miles. And uh, no watch or warning or anything like that. But... Uh, one day that uh, will change that's for sure um but yeah kind of kind of uh been watching this area pretty closely here over the next over the past couple days it's been like i said super duper quiet there are some microquakes taking place here around the region of the crete and the mediterranean sea uh, but very small at that and that's on the emsc models but we're getting like i say we in in general folks plate movement generally heads from uh from the east to the west pacific plate moving off to the west northwest area uh and kind of up around the bend here i'm not going to go into the whole dynamics of this i i tend to show the uh, uh plate tectonic map uh, often here on this uh channel it kind of shows you the general direction of the plate movement and uh generally speaking when we see this activity here it's kind of you can almost draw an arrow in this general direction and uh, the lack of activity here is a little concerning. So just keep an eye out for that region. 
far as the rest of the states go, let's check out the all magnitudes here. Some movement here at the southern end of the Cascadia. I did see an earthquake come in onto the Petrolia station earlier. Uh, not for sure if they've added that onto the map. These are some deep earthquakes here into the southern end of the Cascadia. One of these uh, earthquakes near Ferndale, 30 kilometers deep here, southern end of the Cascadia. Uh, so this area, I think, still got to watch it pretty closely, folks. 322 years and counting. Uh, build up and stress along a major subduction zone. There's a lot that's taken place here over the years and uh, It's just a matter of time before we see the big one uh, and that one will be bad Let me tell you that will not be good Southern Cal some movement. It looks like on the Pacific side of the plate boundary here a little activity around the Fontana, California region for 1.4 and uh, some other smaller quakes around the San Jacinto fault zone a little bit of activity on the eastern side of the plate boundary on the North American plate, uh, right on the, uh, just like it looks like it's just right off the San Andreas Fault Zone there, 2.4 near Desert Hot Springs. No swarming to report around the Salton Sea at the moment. Low activity up here in the Ridgecrest area. And some activity up around, once again, the uh, Antelope Valley, just outside of Antelope Valley, uh, although most of that activity from last night. Uh, Oregon. What do we got up at the uh, Oregon area? Some uh, some movement still taking place here. Looks like uh, that was earlier activity around the Newberry Volcano. Looks like maybe they added a couple of the quakes that we've seen on the live, or not on the live, but on the uh, recorded seismographs here. Let's go over here to the Newberry Volcano in Oregon. We'll check out the uh, seismograph stations here. Closest one would be this one. I think this one was uh, not accessible, so we'll see uh, yeah, that one's not found. It's kind of odd, but that's all right. We, as long as we got one of these working here. Uh, this one here is close enough to monitor the activity ongoing there at the Newberry Volcano. Give it a second here. Wow, look at that. That's some S waves kicking off from, uh, I believe that's from the 4.6 that struck off the coast of Oregon. That actually showed up pretty nicely there uh, just moments ago. Uh, and th there's the S waves kicking up. That's pretty crazy to see. Uh, there's some of the activity earlier in the day. This earthquake here struck at around uh, 13, 14, probably around 1400, right? Looks like it's around 1400, possibly, maybe in that time frame. Between 1320 and 1420. So I'd like to see uh, 1320 and 1420. So that's going to be this one right here, a 1 1.2 uh, earthquake. Uh, at 0.8 kilometers that almost that kind of looks like a little bit bigger than a 1.2, but uh, That's kind of all right if, if they say so it looks like some other activity as well earlier in the day So I'm glad they're adding them at least uh, We're still watching and monitoring that activity pretty closely there at uh, volcano Mount Rainier one little earthquake up here right smack dab on the map here on the summit a uh, point three Mount St. Helens looks pretty quiet, at least on the map tonight. Yellowstone, there's not a whole lot going on at the Yellowstone stations, folks. We'll go ahead and check this out just for verification. Uh, looks like some wind events or something going on up there in the area of Yellowstone National Park. But as far as earthquake activity, there is one spike right here. That one showed up on a couple of the stations nearby, Mary Lake, uh, a little west thumb. That's, that's about it, though. So those are very small quakes. Uh, maybe it looks like it showed up there as well, but uh, USGS, I don't even think they bothered with it on the all magnitudes, not showing anything up here in Yellowstone National Park at the moment. Uh, backing out of here, the eastern part of the country, one more earthquake out here around the New Madrid zone in the Arkansas area. Also, uh, Pecos, Texas, still seeing a swarming of activity there. They've uh, been having an ongoing swarm for quite a while. This is a seven days all magnitudes map. Probably getting another earthquake coming in here on my phone. Yep. Uh, looks like 4.7 off the coast of Oregon right now from the from the quake feed. I'm wondering if they've updated that. Let me back out of this region and see if they've. Uh, yes, it looks like they've upgraded the uh, the earthquake from a 4.6 to a 4.7 there in the uh, Blanco fracture zone. It's kind of weird because they said it was just reviewed, right? So it gets reviewed by somebody and they said, well, no, no, it's, it's this magnitude. And then it gets reviewed again. They post the relevant magnitude it's just an ongoing game but uh they'll get it right right at least they're not super downgrading it and said it was a two-pointer 
because we've seen uh, the pretty good size signature on the um, Newberry Volcano Seismograph. Yeah, so 4.7 off the coast of Oregon. Got to watch this pretty closely here, folks. I think uh, I think uh, there's a couple areas to watch right now. Like I said, this area right here around the Mediterranean Sea, China. Remember the round the bend uh, pressure movement over here. I don't think uh, if we see nothing here in the uh, hours to come and days to come, it's possible we could see some further activity here uh, along the west coast, the eastern part of the Pacific Plate. Uh, looks kind of like it's kind of grinding over here a little bit. Uh, let's see what else we got into the Pacific. We go Hawaii, uh, southeast flank region, still showing some movement. Uh, also up here around Kilauea and across Mauna Loa. One little earthquake out here at 3.5. Uh, that was earlier in the day around the uh, around the sea mounts. These areas have seen quite a bit of movement here over the last couple days. Some some threes kicking off here, stretching off across the island. Uh, in this general direction. Uh, let's see here. The rest of the Indian Ocean, aside from that, pretty quiet. The Atlantic, quiet as well. Look at South America, though. Look at that. This continues. The last seven days of activity here um, in this area. I want to zoom in and check here and see what we got. We got about 17, well, 17 Earth, 14 earthquakes, okay, along the Prue Trench. Looks like the largest in this week-long activity only a 5.4 so we really haven't seen a whole lot of movement in terms of uh, typical activity this is very slim very uh, very minor activity normally we see it uh, um, look like these other subduction zones here uh, but it's kind of lacking right there kind of lacking earthquake activity so uh, definitely got to be on guard over in that region as well uh, once again, tremor activity is dead. There's not a whole lot going on in that. Um, check out the space weather activity here real quick. Just going to keep this kind of a short update tonight. Space weather, not a whole lot going on. The 1.4 kicked off here. Looks like uh, over the last 48 hours, two, almost two days ago now. Look for a possible G G1 class storm. Uh, we should see the uh, KP index ramp up after midnight, March 27th, G1. Storm predicted, so KP, uh, KB index of at least about a five. Uh, right now, things kind of looking mellow on the scale. We'll see how that ramps up tonight. Uh, sunspot activity looking pretty uh, pretty awesome. It's, that's a large sunspot. I kind of wish I had a, um, a telescope or a solar scope, solar telescope uh, to be able to see those sunspots on the sun like that. It's pretty neat. Uh, but looks like the dynamics, at least according to these folks, are saying that there's not a heightened, not, not really a heightened chance of uh, of any major flaring at the moment. But uh, definitely worth watching pretty closely. All right, guys, um, have a good day. Stay safe out there. Like I said, watch a couple of those areas that, that I mentioned there. It's uh, I've got to get rid of that image. I keep popping it up. Keep hitting the wrong button. Uh, but. Uh, Let's see here. Look at those uh, those S waves coming in right there. That's in Australia. That's got to be from the 5.7 over there in the uh, Indian Ocean. Missing a couple data stations here. Not for sure what happened to the Azars or the Japan station, but they're off the air currently. So I will check back on them uh, when they're available, which will hopefully be soon. All right, folks, have a good night. Enjoy your Saturday. We will chat you guys a little bit later unless something uh, major happens and this keep the world spinning this way. We don't want it turning backwards, right? Already, already enough stuff going on out here in the world. We don't need more havoc with the earth turning backwards. Peace out, guys.